Alrighty. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of Coastal Law Webinar Series. My name is Yunus Lari. I'm an attorney, uh, an alumni of Florida Coastal and admissions counselor here in the Office of Admissions. Although I'm uh, coming to you today from Virginia from my hotel room, as you can uh, see uh, a couple of weeks ago in our last webinar, um, I was uh, presenting from uh, Philadelphia. So it's fun to be on the road. Uh, see a lot of interesting things. Um, I'll be your host today. Uh, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. Uh, we certainly appreciate that and we'll do our best to make it worth your while. Um, as I've mentioned before, uh, we appreciate you uh, participating in these webinars. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, I will bring that up again so that uh, you don't forget to ask questions. That always helps to tailor these webinars to your needs um, so that it fits uh, your needs better um, that way. It's more customized. Today, uh, I am delighted to be joined by two of our brightest and most active students, Mrs. Jenny Harrison and Mr. Philip Bazemore. They are going to share with us some of their experiences in law school and give you some practical peer-to-peer -peer tips and advice on what to do and what to avoid and how to be more successful in law school in general. Amongst many other activities and along the rigorous law school schedule, we are lucky to have Jenny helping us in our Office of Admissions. And Philip, of course, is the president of SBA uh, here in the school. As always, like I said before, I encourage you, all of you to ask any questions you might have at any time during the presentations, and we will do our best to answer as many of them as possible. All right. Now, without any further ado, I give you the president of SBA, Mr. Philip Baysmore. Uh, Philip, take it away. Thank you, Eunice. I uh, appreciate the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Philip Baysmore. I'm the president of the Student Bar Association. Um, I'm a three out here at Florida Coastal. It's been an excellent experience. I have about, I graduated in May. Um, my time in here at Florida Coastal has been unique, um, unique in the sense that I've had an opportunity to be a part of several different organizations on campus. Um, primarily, they involve the Student Bar Association, of course, the mock trial team. I'm currently in competition right now. We are going to travel to Orlando to compete against all of the Florida schools for a statewide competition in which we'll be discussing uh, a, shouldn't mess this up, we will be discussing a civil liability claim. Um, I'm representing the plaintiffs. But as far as what I want to tell you guys, as far as SBA goes, it's the Student Bar Association. The Student Bar Association is in charge of governing all of the student organizations as well as working alongside administration to communicate the needs of the students the law, in a large part, what we do is we provide the additional activities, support that students need to throughout their throughout the transition through law school. Um, Student Bar Association consists of several different committees. Um, as the president, I had a president along with my vice presidents and my secretary and my treasurer. We had the committees. We make sure that the committees are properly funded and then with those committees we put on several different events. Those, event, those events include uh, the Mentor Mentee Social, uh, Mentor Mentee Program. That program is where incoming 1Ls, we, I pair them with like-minded 3Ls and 2Ls and from that usually it, we get a good um, teamwork and the, the pairing from the mentor to mentee usually lasts throughout your law school career. As a matter of fact, I remember Janiqua, Ms. Harrison, she was a member of the mentor mentee program, and I believe that she found it beneficial. Uh, let me see. As far as what else law, SBA does, SBA also actively engages with administration. Some of the concerns that students have, such as making sure that their voice is heard, decisions on changes that occur, such as 
when meetings should be preferred or better times for scheduling. It's my job to make sure the administration hears those opinions from the students. Student Bar Association is also the provider for the end of the year. Social is called Barristers Ball. It's a great time. Um, Barristers Ball is at the end of the year. It's typically in May this year, we're moving it towards February so that students can get together. Um, it's a chance where the Student Bar Association all year, we work with charity organizations and at the end of the year at this event, we, pre we present the charity with a check. Um, in the past, it's been to the amount of 10,000, 30,000. So a large part of our year is spent doing pro bono op opportunities, helping those less fortunate than us uh, achieve their goals. Um, other things that I wanted to talk about as far as SBA, SBA is a great way to show your leadership talent. Um, in law school, you'll be with peers who are like-minded. They all want to be leaders and are leaders in their minds. So to be a part of SBA is to be a leader amongst leaders. And a lot of the members of SBA, the legislators, take a lot of pride in that opportunity to make a difference and to represent those that are just like them. Another thing I want to talk about is how to get involved with school. My, my process of being involved in school as a 1L, um, at the end of the year, you'll get an opportunity to try for the mock trial and the moot court teams. And before you even get there, you can always sign up to the clubs such as the Corporate Business Law Society or the Black Law Students Association or the Immigration Rights Association. Those involvement activities give you exposure as a young students, um, exposure is very necessary, you'll find that a larger, more significant part of your exposure is based on these early opportunities you can get being a part of the clubs and networking through your clubs and then from that, you take those experiences and turn them into larger networking opportunities. Most organizations will have a social and then at that social they will usually broaden out so that other schools who have the same interests, um, the Black Law Students Association from our school um, can collaborate with another school and create a overall project and give a mission to every year's success, every year's administration. Um, part of being active in school, I would say first off, don't be afraid to take a little time to yourself and figure out what it is that you want to do. Um, for myself, I'm a business, I want to sense around business, mergers and acquisitions specifically. And so when I first came to school, of course, the Corporate Business Law Society was one of the first organizations I joined. Um, and then while I was participating in this Corporate Business Law Organization, the end of the year came and it gave me an opportunity to try out for the mock trial and the moot court teams. And I tried out for both. I only made one. It's uh, it takes a lot to, for it takes a lot for an individual to make both teams. But we have several students on campus that do those two along with a law review and these level these different honor societies, these honor clubs give you exposure that you just don't get an opportunity to have if you're not involved. Um, um, I want to get a chance to tell you about what Jacksonville is like. Jacksonville, I've been here now four years, so I got here a little bit before my school year started. Jacksonville is an excellent place to, to really focus on your law studies. It provides you with enough excitement outside of school so that you do enjoy your experience here, but you're not overwhelmed with the hustle and bustle of a bigger city. What you do get here is the concentration of the downtown area, of a beach area, of the south side area where our school is located. And with those, with there only being those three concentrations of, of places where you can have an activity, you don't get too distracted. But at the same time, because our school is located at the center of both the beach and downtown, right now we have the best of both worlds. It's easy to commute to and from either place. A larger part of what makes Jacksonville special is that we do have a, a bigger legal community. 
the, the ability to work within your organization and then you become active or the ability to find pro bono opportunities so that you can get your foot in the water, so to say, when it comes to getting legal experience is great here. We have a lot of pro bono organizations such as Four, uh, Three Rivers and JALA and a lot of students also take part in the state's attorney's office and the uh, public defender's office. A lot of friends that actually participate that, especially being part of the mock trial team. What, what you don't get at Jacksonville, which I, what I don't think you get at a lot of other places that you do get at Jacksonville, is the network. I, I got to say that every time I bring up a topic that I'm interested in, my professors actually know somebody in town who does what I want to do. And to me, that's, of course, the most beneficial. If I shall improve myself, then I'll, I expect that I'll be given an opportunity to meet that person who does what I want to do. Um, when it comes to studying tricks and habits, um, my number one thing for incoming students is to just get in there and not be afraid of spending a whole lot of time doing your work. The, the, the books that you read, they're, they're going to be a different language. For myself, I believe it's, it's more or less like stamina. You, you can read at first and you'll read for 40 minutes or 30 minutes straight and you'll be worn out. But continuously working at your reading, your retention level will allow for you to still be able to, to, to be able to continue into reading for an hour and reading for two hours straight or an hour and a half with a break. But more importantly than how long you read is how much you retain while reading. And that is something that you only gain with experience and with practice. And so the, the largest tip I can give you for studying and, and being good in school is that it doesn't happen overnight. There's very few people who come into the school with an understanding of what law school is going to be like. So you're at a, a level playing field. And it's those who spend the time and learn themselves, their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they actually learn that benefit the most. So the, the biggest study tip I can give you is to be prepared to put in the time that it's going to take to make your, make your day shorter. Because the more time you spend reading, the faster you'll be able to read, the better you'll be able to ret retain that information. And from all of that, the experience will actually be a little bit faster. Um, I, I want to say, if I was going to give any advice to the, the incoming students, it would be that you never know who somebody else knows. And I say that to say that there are so many professors you don't get an opportunity to be a part of their class as a student, but to not shelter yourself off from communicating with them. And that goes, to, that goes the same with any member of the faculty, whether it be, the, um, whether it be from the admissions department or the career services, or even the technology department, because it is a law school, the, everybody's network somewhat revolves around lawyers and, and that you only need, and because you only need one reference to get you where you want to go, you have to stay, um, you have to stay, just got a message kind of, thank you for being here today. Um, do you feel that professors and instructors are safe? goals and are willing to help you achieve those goals. Um, thank you so much for the question. Now we have nowhere to go. Any other questions, please bring, please type them in and I'm happy to answer. My professors, yes, I, for an example, I have a professor and I express my concentration in corporate law, business, mergers and acquisitions. And Everybody, every time I bring this conversation up, she again reminds me of another person that she knows and happily sends an email over to that person, being the first person, being able to get me in communication with that individual. Um, my, my professors are supportive in my goals in that as this is a professional environment, they do understand that not every, that people have particular objectives. My particular objective in school is to of course, be well-rounded and be well-spoken and, and, and develop the legal background, but primarily is, is to be an 
involved with the corporate world. And so your professors, they've been in the same position you have and that they know that you want something and, and they're very much happy to get you there. Um, how far are they going to assist me with my goals? I, I've had a professor one time <laughs> make friends with a, 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 a bridge that they burned more or less and just in order for me to get in that get in get my foot in the door and actually speak with a friend that they they were not at the very moment invested times with and that that says a lot because I, I don't believe that my me and that professor's relationship was so special that I don't expect for another individual to be treated the same way. And so that's unique in Florida Coastal. I, that, I think that comes from the open door policy. You see so many professors who you know what class they teach and perhaps your professor's busy or you, they have an exam coming. So their doors, even though they're open, perhaps are a little busy with students who also have similar questions. But the right next door, there might be a professor who doesn't have an exam but teaches the same material and they're willing, even though they're not your professor at the moment, to take time to explain the subject. And I think that summarizes the overall morale of the school and that everybody's here to assist one another, um, myself included. So if there's any other questions that you have, I'm going to turn it over to Eunice. But if you don't mind emailing me, I'm sure he'll provide my email to anybody that's interested in it. Um, thank you so much for being able to speak. And everybody have a great day. Thank you. All right, all right. Well, thank you very much, Philip. Uh, great information on uh, SBA activities and all the extra activities while you're on, on, in law school. I couldn't agree more. Uh, your point about maintaining attention while it's studying and gaining that as a muscle um, is I, I couldn't agree more again. Uh, that's uh, that's exactly uh, my experience while I was in school. And, and now that I'm practicing attention is definitely, uh, especially with, uh, uh, do I dare say, our generation is one of those commodities that is becoming more and more rare to come by. Uh, so work on your attention and work on your speeding, uh, your reading speed and uh, and the attention to detail. Also, best of luck to you in the upcoming competition in Orlando. Uh, I know you guys are going to do great. You always have, and uh, I have uh, the most uh, faith in uh, in your abilities. All right. Well, um, like I said, thanks again, Philip. Uh, I know you have a class coming up, so I especially thank you for uh, taking that uh, very little time, uh, free time that you have uh, between your classes to uh, to attend. And I'm sure uh, a lot of uh, students, prospective students out there, find uh, uh, what you shared with us very, very helpful. All right. Uh, now, without any further ado, I'm going to um, turn it back to or actually send it to uh, Jenny. Uh, Jenny has uploaded some uh, slides for uh, you guys and for all of us. I'm going to upload those and uh, uh, can you hear me. Uh, uh, go ahead and uh, turn your camera on and your mic on and uh, there you go. All right. It is all yours. Just give me a minute to upload the slides and uh, let me find it here. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Yunus. I really appreciate it. Hi, everyone. My name is Janiqua. Um, I go by Jenny, and I did prepare a little slideshow for you guys today. Just a couple of things that I'm involved with here at Florida Coastal School of Law. I'm a student ambassador, actually the graduation chair of the student ambassadors, so I oversee the commencement ceremony. Um, also, I'm on the moot court on a board that Philip spoke about earlier. I'm the president of the Phi Alpha Delta Law Fraternity, the secretary of the Entertainment Law Society. I'm a student representative for LexisNexis, which is a search engine that we get all of our cases and do all of our research in. And I'm also um, a soldier in the United States Army Reserve. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, a few things that I want to mention about Florida Coastal School of Law. The first thing that I would like to point out about my law school is the diversity here. I recently received a phone call from someone who said, oh, I visited another law school and I just didn't feel like I fit in there. Well, at Florida Coastal, you don't have to worry about that. No matter 
what you're represented by or whom you represent, there's a spot for everyone here. I know earlier Philip mentioned our student organizations. There is the African Law Society, the Black Law Student Association, the Caribbean Society, the um, Immigration Society, the um, Military Law Society, almost any organization that you can probably think of, the Hispanic Law Society, um, the Republican Law Society, any organization that you can possibly think of, of any or any character that you possibly can think that you rep represent is represented from a student organization here on campus. Um, so it's very good. So you um, have that opportunity to find a group of people that share similar interests as you. Also, another reason why I wanted to, uh, why I did mention that I was a soldier is because I feel like Florida Coastal is very military friendly. Um, like I said, we have the Military Law Association. They also um, have a, a back to school military luncheon every semester where we all the military personnel get together and we converse and we make connections. And outside of our SBA mentor mentee program, the Military Law Society does a mentor mentee program with junior enlisted soldiers and veterans or senior enlisted soldiers. So we can kind of progress in our military career as well as we are progressing in our civilian career as well. Um, one thing that I really harp on about Florida Coastal School of Law is I feel like it is extremely family oriented. Um, that's why I said no one should feel out of place when they step in this school. Even if someone doesn't know you, they're going to speak, they're going to say hello. If they notice they haven't seen your face before, they'll say, oh, are you new here? Are you a 1L? Oh, OK, so you're a new student. So how are things going for you? So even the professors it's just a simple, hey, can I speak with you for a moment? I'm confused about this. It's just simply very family oriented. And I really appreciate that um, about Florida Coastal. I do want to be realistic with you as well and let you know that the law school journey isn't easy at all. However, if it were easy, everyone would do it. Um, and even though it's not easy, don't be confused. It's definitely not impossible either. Hard work, dedication, resilience, what you put in is what, you, what you'll get out. So just make sure you're focused and you're putting the hard work in and you'll do fine. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be very realistic with you. So it's not easy at all. And a lot of times you're going to feel like you put a lot of hard work in and you, you may not get the results you wanted. Because remember, um, you know, you may have been the smartest in your class out of undergrad. But when you get to law school, these are, you know, students who are all or, or most of them were top of their class in undergrad. So it's all the smart people in one class um, in one school. So you gotta um, you gotta push. You gotta dig a little bit deeper than you did in undergrad. Um, stay up a few more hours longer than you did in undergrad. So it's really um, a deeper dive. But what I want to say to you, there are gonna be times that you're gonna be like, oh, I tried my best, and you know I still gotta see. Like I thought I thought this paper was a material. You know different things like that, and you're gonna talk to your professor and you're just like, hey, you know I feel like I I fail here, like, you know, what's going on? So there are going to be times where you're going to be like, okay, so I have to push a little bit harder. But one of my favorite quotes that I do want to um, leave with you, if you leave with nothing else, if you fall seven times, the only thing that matters is that you stand up eight. So if, if this test didn't work out, the only thing that matters is that you come back to class the next day, dive deeper into the material, meet with your professor. The only thing that matters is you keep pushing forward. So all these failures or these bends, just keep pushing forward. And that's the only thing that really matters. Also, what I want to um, let you know, I know Philip. Uh, spoke to you all about different study habits and different things. The advice that I want to give to you all is that find what works best for you, because what works best for others may not necessarily work best for you. Um, some people use note cards. Some people are audio. They have to just go back and listen to it over and over again. Um, some people are visual. They have to draw things out. They have to just really see them. Um, some people I don't know what you call them, but they just, well, they're me. 
I could just have to write things over and over again. The more I write something, the more I remember it. So I'll take my notes and I'll write them over and over again, three, four, five times. And by the time that I've written this this outline um, five or six times, it's kind of like it's just stuck in my head. And I'm also a note card person as well. I like to use note cards. Some people look at me and they're like, how do you use those note cards? I just can't study that way. So when coming in, you have to find what works best for you. You may have a study group and everyone in that study group may study a little bit differently, um, but you guys can still come together collaboratively and um, review things and share things. Um, so just find what's, what, what works best for you. Also, one thing that I do want to tell you guys is that use your resources. Florida Coast, Coastal offers so many resources. Um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Florida Coastal provides the wheel for you. All you got to do is roll with it. Um, we have Barbary, we have Kaplan, we have E&E, we have Seagulls. And for those of you who may not be familiar with those, those are all what we call supplements. So along with our textbooks, these are supplements that have... Uh, outlines in there for you, practice questions. So you have to use your resources. Um, we have the academic success counselors. So we have counselors on campus that if you're not getting it and you've been to your professor and you've been to other students and you're just like, I am not getting this topic. We have a whole, a whole help you better understand it. Also with the writing center, um, even if you're an English major, Law school is a different type of writing. So we have the writing center to help get you adjusted, you know, with that writing to help um, give you sample writings. And and you can write these essays and bring back the samples and they'll tell you, you know, critique those and help you out there. And they also provide workshops. Every other week I get an email like, hey, we're doing a multiple choice workshop to show you how to better do the process of elimination when doing multiple choice or how to better pick out the actual issue in your question for multiple choice or hey, we're having a, a essay workshop to show you how to really format your essays. So you have to use your resources because if you go to your teacher and you say, hey, I'm not understanding um, how these multiple choice are really set up. Well, they're gonna say, well, have you been practicing multiple choice? Have you been using your Barbary book? Have you been using your Kaplan book? And all of these resources that are listed on this PowerPoint for you are free. You don't have to pay for pay any extra for any of these. Florida Coastal provides all of these for you. Um, the number one re, um, resource that I want to really drill into you guys to use is your professor. That's the best resource you can ever have because, again, they do write your test. So I'm pretty sure they will be able to tell you exactly how to filter through their work. So always go to your professor. I mean, you have, of course, you want to go to your classmates and your study group and um, your mentors. But before that, you always go to your professor first because the person who wrote the test is the best person to tell you a good way um, or give you a strategy to pass the test. Also, as I just previously stated, practice makes perfect. So all of those supplements that are completely free to you, uh, make sure that you use those. Make sure that you practice multiple choice. You practice essay writing. Um, and I know multiple choice seems really minor, but law school multiple choice is a little bit different, a lot different, actually. <laughs> um, so make sure you practice uh, multiple choice, um, even for those of you who may not be enrolled in law school yet, or you may still be on the fence, multiple choice is still a good thing to practice because you have the LSAT. Um, if you haven't taken the LSAT, you have that coming up. So also, um, that's a that's a great practice. Also, with the multiple choice and with the essay writing, time yourself. Because if you're practicing multiple choice and you never time yourself, when you get in the room and they say, okay, you have two hours and you have these many multiple choice and you're like, oh, wait, wait, oh, that's only a minute per question or that's only two minutes per question. I don't know if I can do two minutes per question. I never time myself. So when you're practicing, um, take certain practice sessions and time them so you can get used to being on the that time restraint as well. And that's even if you're still on the fence about law school, that's for the LSAT as well. Others outlines. Um, you'll have mentors, you'll have people that will try to help, and they definitely don't mean any harm by it. They just want to help. So you'll tell them, hey, I'm taking um, 
evidence class and they're like, oh, I have a great detailed outline for evidence. Or some of your supplements, the Seagulls, the Kaplan, the Barbary, they have outlines in them. What I want to tell you is for outlines, never take someone's or a supplement's outline and say, oh, okay, I don't need to take notes in class or I don't really need to pay attention as much because I have an outline. You want to always use someone, if someone offers you, hey, take it, that's fine. But you always use it as a supplement to your own outline. I have a lot of people that say, hey, I have an outline for that class. Or I look at my Barbie book and there's an outline for that class. But what I do is that I pay attention in class as if I don't have an outline at all. And I take my own notes and I create my own outline. So when I have um, a supplements outline or someone else's outline, I look and I, I use it as a supplement for me. And I say, hey, on this topic, I only had one sentence, but they have, you know, a lot on this topic. So let me you know what? I wasn't paying that close attention. Let me go back and pay a little bit more close attention to this topic because I don't have as much as this other person does. Or it may be a topic where I've written three pages on this topic and this person has maybe two paragraphs. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm focusing a little bit too much on this. Maybe it's not that um, heavily tested. Um, do the professors allow students to record lectures? Megan, that is up to the professor's discretion. You can talk to your professor and say, hey, is it okay if I record your le lectures? And most of them are going to tell you no. Just being honest. Um, but like I, again, I said, it's, it's at their discretion. However, there's actually not a need for that. Every class that I've ever um, taken at Photo Coastal, it's already recorded. 99.999% of the professors record their lectures. So, um, and they probably upload them maybe a few hours after class. Some will upload them the next day. But almost every professor's lectures are recorded. Um, and they you go back on and you can see the podcast and it's kind of how like you and I are talking. Um, you can't see the professor's face, but you can hear him and what he's saying in class. And um, you can see the PowerPoints as he's flipping through the PowerPoints and things like that. So a lot of um, majority, almost all of our classes are recorded already. So there's no need to um, record the professor because they already do it for you. Philip already touched on this very heavily, so I won't spend a lot of time on the um, SBA Mentor Mentee Initiative. I do want to say I think it's more than amazing. And as he did state, I did participate in that last year. And I feel like I got more than just a mentorship out of it. Um, Mrs. Charday uh, Smallwood was my mentor coming in. I never, I've been in school for a little while, never seen her before, you know, whatever. And I met her and, oh my gosh, she was such, she was much more than a mentor. She helped me with work, um, work that she really was on the fence about. She really didn't completely understand. She would always point me in the right direction. She's going on. She's graduated. She's taking the bar exam. I still talk to her at least once a day, at least once a day. Um, if she knows my exam schedule better than I do, when it's exam time, she'll wake me up at six o'clock in the morning with encouraging words. Hey, you got this. You can do this. Don't give up. Keep pushing. This is just a minor thing for um, uh, just just something major that you're doing. So um, and they do a great job with pairing mentors. It's someone who has similar background as you and then similar interest in you in the law, um, who's had similar professors than you with, excuse me, similar professors as you. So they can help you get a feel of those professors. They did an amazing, amazing job pairing Sade and I. And like I said, that was last year and she's moved on. She's moved back to Maryland. And we still talk every day. So you really get lifelong friendships from their mentor mentee initiative. It's, it's more than amazing. What I do, um, Philip has talked a lot about law school. I have talked a lot about law school. What I do want um, you to realize is you have to create a balance. There has to be a balance. Professional life versus law school life. You're going to get here and you're going to realize law school is my life it is my life there are going to be times where you're going to feel like i miss I, I never miss my mom's birthday and i had to miss my mom's birthday because i was studying or i miss my friend's graduation um but 
those little minor sacrifices um, it may seem very major, but they're minor compared to your destiny, compared to where you're going. So just remember to create a personal balance between your personal life and law school life. Because with law school, it's hard. It's rigorous, sleepless nights, early mornings. But you don't want to get overwhelmed because you are physically, mentally shut down. So you want to make sure you have that balance. And I know this all seems scary because everyone's like, law school's hard. It's rigorous. Law school is life. You don't have a personal life. All these things. Um, but I do want you to keep in mind that if it were easy, everyone would be attorneys. If it were easy, everyone would be doctors. You are entering into an elite profession. You may not be a doctor, but you have people's lives in your hands, um, whether no matter what it is, even if you don't want to do criminal law, but even if it's environmental law, even if it's real estate law, it may not necessarily be people's lives, but you definitely hold people's livelihoods in your hands. This is an elite profession. Everyone can't do it. We don't want everyone to be able to do it. We want the best of the best. We want we want to keep the attorney field very elite. So the reward of your JD your law school experiences, which will be abundant and amazing, and the lifelong friendships will all be worth the sleepless nights. So yes, it's hard. Yes, it's rigorous. But the finish line, it's more than well worth it. And Philip, who just spoke to you previously, is very close to the finish line. And as he, as he told you, it's very well worth it. Go, piggybacking off the creative balance, one thing I want to tell you all is to just breathe. Even though you're studying and, and this is that, you have to take time to yourself. You will become, if you don't take time to yourself and you're living, breathing, eating, sleeping, law school, which some people do, and there's nothing wrong with that, but just being realistic, you will mentally, physically, um, spiritually, just, you will burn out. And you will burn out so quick, it will make your head spin. Pray, meditate, work out, listen to music, whatever works for you that helps you ease your mind and just give you, give you that break. If it's music, if it's working out, if it's hanging out, um, just don't overdo it. You have to have that balance and you have to have that breathing time. Now, I'm not saying the breathing time should be an entire weekend, but you do have to take at least 30 minutes a day to just breathe without any books, any lectures, at least take 30 minutes of your day um, to yourself. You have to. Speaking of that, Florida Coastal does offer a meditation room, which is on the fourth floor. And it's um, a meditation slash prayer room, whatever your beliefs or your religion is. It's a quiet room. And um, it's kind of dim in there. They have a little lamp on and you're able to shut the door and just have your time there. No one's allowed to be in there studying or sleeping or whatever. It's only for meditation purposes. So we do have a quiet room. Um, and also, if you don't take this advice and you're like, I don't need reading time. I can do this. I can do this. And you eventually burn yourself out or you eventually find yourself in a mental strain. Florida Coastal also offers on-campus counseling. It's the door right next to the meditation room. And they offer camp, um, counselors, not academic counselors, but a mental counselors to just talk to you about life. You know, if something's going on in your marriage and it's affecting your schoolwork, they can talk to you about that. And it's completely confidential. The room doesn't even have windows. Nobody even knows that you're in there. Um, so we definitely provide resources for their breathing time as well. And network, 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 network. That is who you are here for. And I know it's cliche. A lot of people um, will tell you it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's network. Network And once again, Florida Coastal offers more than enough opportunities to network, whether it's 1L, 2L, 3L. They're going to give you so many networking opportunities. You're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I do not want to shake another person's hand. That's just how many opportunities that you have to network at Florida Coastal. Just to piggyback off Philip a little bit, life in Jacksonville, front and center is the beach for me. I love the beach. I have even studied there and it was amazing. We also have Adventure Landing, which is kind of like a mini theme park, um, so to speak. 
uh, NASCAR, little go-kart racing, laser tag, golf, water park. Um, we're also home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we have the NFL team here. Our school and student body does get discount tickets along with the t-shirt every time you purchase a discount ticket. So that's amazing. Also, not far from here, we have the St. Augustine's Premium Outlets. So not only do we have an abundance of shopping, um, indoor malls, outdoor malls, we also have an outlet, which is really, really good if you like to shop. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and I'm going to pass it back to Mr. Eunice. But what I do want to say before I pass it back, and this is this is a law school tip. This is a life tip. As a man thinketh within his heart, so is he. And which means you are exactly who you think you are. You can accomplish exactly what you think you can accomplish. If you come to this school and you said, I'm going to be the top of my class, I'm going to be number one and nobody's going to stop me. That is exactly what you're going to do. If you come to this school and you say, hey, I don't care about all that top of the class. I just want to coast. I just want to get by. You're going to be a person that gets by. You're going to be a coaster. Nobody can determine who you are but you. Nobody can define you, can define you but you. You define yourself. Come in with whatever. If you say I'm going to be the best lawyer, that's what you're going to be. If you're here, say, oh, I'm just here because I want my parents to get off my back. That's who you are. So define yourself, because if you don't define yourself, the world will do it for you. So define yourself. Think positive. Keep a positive mindset. And um, one of my attorneys, uh, excuse me, not my attorneys, <laughs> one of my professors, Professor Williams, I appreciate him so much because in his evidence class, he doesn't say, um, you know, Harrison or whatever. He calls us attorneys. And, and, you know, and I really, he said, um, attorney Harrison, or he was like, do you want to be an attorney? Do you want to be a judge? And I said, I want to be a judge one day. And he says, um, okay, well, whenever I call on you in class, that's how I will address you. So whenever he calls on me in class, he's like, Judge Harrison. So we had this scenario in your courtroom. What would you decide? So he really speaks life into us and he speaks these th these things into existence. So um, you are who you think you are. And along with you thinking that, please remember that, like I said, this is an elite profession. So exactly who you think and what you think you are, make sure you carry yourself as such. Out, out of school, in school, once you enter an elite profession such as being an attorney, you're held to a different standard. It's not always a fair standard. It's not always a fair standard, um, but a very high standard where people are going to feel like you're not human anymore because you're a lawyer, which is, I mean, it's just certain things you can't do, certain things you can't engage in, certain things you can't address. So you are exactly who you think you are, but remember to conduct yourself as such. And if you think that you are who you are and you conduct yourself as such the rest of the world will follow you and they'll address you as such i hope this was helpful um, i'm sure mr Yunus, as philip said will provide information for you guys to contact me but um have a great week thank you so much all right well thank you very much to find yourself indeed that was a very good presentation thank you very much jenny uh, I know I could have used a presentation like that before I went to law school. That would have saved me a lot of time in my first year, second year, and probably last year as well. I'm still learning a lot of the lessons that was in that presentation. Well done again. And uh, thank you for uh, taking the time out to be here to present. And thank you uh, to all of our um, audience members who uh, once again take the time out of their busy schedules to be here. Good questions. Um, if you guys have any other questions, I'm just going to uh, wrap this up uh, for the next couple minutes. But please go ahead and uh, write it in uh, the column uh, to the uh, left of your screens. If not, uh, I'm going to follow up with an email with all the participants uh, in this uh, in this webinar. I will uh, send the information, the contact information for uh, both of these brilliant uh, 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 law students that we have. So, if you have any other questions, you can go ahead, uh, uh, go ahead and ask them uh, more. As for me, uh, I just want to say uh, good luck with everything you're doing, and uh, uh, please uh, check out the invitations that will come your way about uh, uh, upcoming webinars. We do have these webinars every other Wednesday, so they are bi-weekly, and uh, we try to attack subjects that are 
of the most interest amongst uh, prospective law students. So keep an eye out for those invitations. Uh, and if there's no other question, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you and good luck from uh, Virginia. And I will see you in a couple of weeks, uh, probably from Alabama. So uh, uh, good luck with everything and see you then. Bye-bye.